Can anybody answer me a very simple question? What the hell is going on between Rusev and the WWE? Like, look, we should be able to just come online and say, Happy Rusev Day! And whatever the hell that means, and it doesn't matter what it means. We just enjoy Rusev, and that's that. But it just can't be that simple, can it? Like, to me, it was really puzzling. On the road to WrestleMania, you take this guy that you could argue in terms of the live event crowd was as over as anybody, who is still one of the top merch sellers in WWE, and they're not even putting him on TV! Like, who in their right minds thinks that this is a good idea? Who sits there and says, hey, this guy moves shirts. We live in the reaction business, and this guy gets a massive TV reaction every week when he comes out. I know how we can make it even better. Let's not put him on TV. God, that's really going to get over. And that's the thing. They try to put screws to the guys like these who find something on their own, do something on their own. It gets over, but because it's not the guy the WWE wants to get over and is most specifically not in the way the WWE wants him to get over, they'll find ways to undercut them. And I understand confidence and arrogance and ego and belief in system, and you see this in sports too sometimes, but at some point in time, the Jimmys and Joes matter as much as the X's and O's. You can have the best strategy and game plan and booking in the world, but if you don't have the talent to carry it out, it doesn't matter. And you were in a business where I don't care who it is, if they can get over, why the hell would you undercut them? And contrary to the beliefs of some who are trying to make sure they don't burn their bridges with WWE someday, the WWE does undercut guys. They do sabotage guys. They do hold guys back. And even people that can't stand my guts agree with me on that one. But here's the WWE doing it yet again. But then they finally kind of come to their senses a little bit and they're like, hey, we got to figure out a spot for him at WrestleMania. So they put him in the U.S. title match and they make it a freaking fatal four-way. Okay, cool. It's going to be on the main card. Even better. So, hey, here's the thing. Let's validate the Rusev Day stuff. Let's validate one of our most over guys on Retarded Raw. Let's validate one of our best merch sellers by maybe having him win the U.S. championship, even if it's not the design or the plan. Let's create this great WrestleMania moment, and then later on you can go right back to doing whatever the hell you want to anyways. That's what you did a couple of years ago with Zack Ryder. I insisted he needed to win that strap at that time because it would generate the best WrestleMania moment. It did. Unfortunately, because it was Zack Ryder, the WWE instantly undercut him and made sure they went right back to the, what the hell they were doing. But it still doesn't take away that moment happening. And you could have done the same thing with Rusev here. And knowing especially that if that wasn't where you wanted to go, you could just as quickly fix it and put it right back. But instead of featuring Rusev strongly, or instead of, God forbid, changing the title at Mania and putting it on him... You have Jinder Mahal win the U.S. title, and not only that, you have a pin freaking Rusev! Like, you want to talk about sending a message, that's sending a message to the audience. F you, we don't care, we're going to do what the hell we want. And it's insane! If you want to have Jinder Mahal even win the U.S. title, fine! Then have him pin Rude or have him pin Orton. There's no need to have him pin Rusev, the biggest guy in the damn match! Which especially to me looks even more ridiculous when eight days later you send Jinder Mahal to freaking Raw to immediately drop the U.S. title to Jeff freaking Hardy. One of these spontaneous things and it's a cool Raw moment. It's a cool thing to remind you, hey, you shouldn't miss the show because you never know what's going to happen. And now Jeff Hardy is a Grand Slam champion even though the company didn't mention that, didn't hype that up even though they did massively with Seth Rollins and the road to WrestleMania and at WrestleMania. But if you were going to do that anyways, even though I don't think you were, it was just something you threw together at the last minute, because otherwise, why the hell would you have gender? Why didn't you just have freaking Rusev win the damn strap? You could have literally had Mahal win it on SmackDown a couple of days later, and then next week went right back to doing the same damn thing. I don't get it. And then we get to this greatest Royal Rumble, and it's initially announced that it's going to be Rusev taking on The Undertaker in a casket match. I might as well call it a buried alive match. Seems awfully symbolic that of all people that are facing The Undertaker, it's Rusev. But ultimately still, 
even when you look at some of the irony there and some of that symbolism, you still can't hide the fact that somebody somewhere in the company has to care something about damn Rusev because they're putting him in a freaking match at a feature show against The Undertaker. They're not just going to put any ham and egg jabroni against Undertaker at this stage of his career, especially with the limited number of matches that he has in the tank and the reservoir. So that is a big spot for Rusev. Even if it's like, oh, we got to send him out there just so that way Taker can close the casket on Rusev and we can get people to care less about Rusev Day, what have you. But shit, it's still facing the Undertaker at the Greatest Royal Rumble. And then we see on Twitter... Rusev kind of snipping about it, and Lana kind of snipping about it. Damn it, I understand some of the frustration, and I can understand wanting to be pushed better, more, and be a more important, significant part of the show. But there is a point in time where you choose to heal the die on, and there also comes a point in time where you should shut the hell up! You are booked in a match against The Undertaker. Take that shit! That's got to be a decent payout. And if it isn't, then you should reevaluate how you negotiate contracts. But Jesus Christ, this is the Undertaker for God's sakes! Who in the hell wouldn't want that match? That is a featured spot. You've got a guaranteed featured spot on the show. Why would you snipe about that? Why would you complain about that? And then WWE sits there and pulls him from the damn match to then come out and announce that Chris Jericho is going to face The Undertaker in said casket match. Okay, that's com completely fucking random. But whatever, cool, but why are we backing off of Rusev? Like, what is the WWE doing? And what is Rusev and Lana doing bitching about having this feature match just to sit there a few days later and apparently go right back to saying the match is back on. It's Rusev versus Taker in a casket match at the Greatest Royal Rumble. Like, why the hell is going on here? Rusev and Lana pick and choose your spots of where you're going to snipe and complain. Because I can't imagine you're making bad money right now because people like me have bought the Rusev Day shirt it's still one of the top merch sellers on the WWE site. How do you know? Because it's one of the ones they choose to feature. So it's got to move pretty, pretty well, and everybody knows it does. You still get a massive reaction from the live audience, and guys have gotten pushed for a lot less. See Jinder Mahal and so many others. Not everything is going to go your way. Not everything is going to be perfect. In this case, for Christ's sake, it almost feels like Rusev and Lana are being freaking smarts here. They're being somebody like me. Stop! You're getting paid very handsomely. Yes, the company could do better with you. The company could do more with you. But don't sit there and undercut yourself for the hell of it. Don't cut out your legs from under your legs, as a wise man once said. Stop! Why would you want to lose that feature spot? And then from the WWE, why would you sit there and pull them, pull them to then put them right back in there? Now, if you're going to say this is a work, what the hell's the work here? What's the angle here? How is this working towards anything that makes more money? How does this make any damn sense? And if you say this is a shoot, what dramatically changed so much over the course of a few days for you to go from Rusev to Jericho to now back to freaking Rusev? I don't freaking get it. Like, it seems like one of these situations that nobody wins, and there's no angle or payoff for any damn buddy. You're right back to square freaking one again. So if anybody, and I mean anybody, can help clue me in, I would like to know the answer to this question. What the hell is the WWE doing with Rusev? Because it makes no damn sense to me, and it's just annoying as frick.